the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, wellspring of goodness and blessings, we give you thanks and praise as one the wish and community. The graces you incessantly grant upon us and your divine providence have sustained our beloved university throughout the years of mission and excellence. Having been founded by the Congregation of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we pray that you keep us committed and dedicated to our mission and identity to serve the Church and the society as we become living witnesses to the Gospel values proclaimed by Jesus. For if we are steadfast in our good and beautiful mission, our works will bring success not only to ourselves, but also to those whom we are bound to love and serve. Inspired by Saint Louis, our patron saint, who was filled with a noble spirit that stirred him to love you above all things, may we also live believing that we are born for a greater purpose and mission as we dwell in your presence all the days of our life. Grant all these supplications through the intercession of Mother Mary and through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At Amusing Day, great readers, Welcome to our 7th week of Learning in Theology 1. I hope you are still eager to learn another interesting topic for this week. But before we start, let's first have a review of our lesson last week. So we have ventured the parent-children relationship in which you have learned that in our setting, the youngest among the siblings is usually the favored one in many ways. And a lot of times, the result is not good. My dear students, you will become a parent soon. An equal treatment of children by parents creates animosity and quarrels among the siblings. Sometimes, we read newspapers or TV cases of siblings killing one another, right? And therefore, it is a challenge to parents to learn or to treat their children equally and recognize whatever talents or skills they have. Because otherwise, children will grow up thinking the world is unfair or even the world owes them something. But take note class that amidst the problem that we are encountering in this lesson, parents are the greatest backbones throughout our peaks and valleys in life. And I think you are now ready to our next chapter in our Bible stories. And at this point, you will encounter more stories to learn and more life-changing messages of each story. Let's renew ourselves by applying what we have learned and what we are about to learn for this week. And now, we will be having the sibling relationship with Cain and Abel. Are you ready? Let's Take it away. A long time ago, just after Adam and Eve had to leave the Garden of Eden, they were very sad about disobeying God. They asked God how they could show Him how sorry they felt. God told them that they could show Him how they felt by sacrificing a lamb, and which they did. After a while, Adam and Eve had two sons. The first son was called Cain, and their second son was called Abel. In the story of Cain and Abel, Cain was a farmer. He grew vegetables and grains, while Abel was a shepherd who looked the family's herds. Cain and Abel were like most siblings. They didn't always get along, but they were brothers and loved each other very much despite their occasional fights. Do you know what happened next? Adam and Eve told Cain and Abel about the message of God gave them that they should sacrifice a lamb to God to show how much they appreciated he had done and how sorry they were for their sins. 
Abel was very concerned that his sacrifice be special to God. He chose his first and best lamb and offered it to the Lord. It was hard for Abel to give up his most prized possession, but it was important to him to try his best to do as God had asked them. Cain thought his little brother was a bit silly for giving up his best lamb. <laughs> Good grief, he thought. We need that lamb. God does it. I'm sure he'd be just as happy if we sacrifice the lamb of the leader. In fact, why does it need to be a lamb at all? I'm a farmer, and it's been a great year for me and for my wheat crop. I can't use everything I've grown. Why don't I just burn some of the extra straw I have? That way, I won't be wasting any. Cain's reasoning sounds pretty good when you first hear it, right? Don't you know, class, that after that, Cain watched as the lamb burned up completely on the altar, while his leftover straw just smoldered the bed and never really caught fire at all. That could mean only one thing. And what do you think it is? That God preferred Abel. And because of that, Cain was so jealous. He didn't take the time or the responsibility to realize that it was his decision to sacrifice his straw that caused the difference in God's response to their sacrifices. Instead, he just got angry at his brother. Cain asked Abel to go for a walk with him, and while he was still angry, Cain struck Abel to the ground and killed him. When Cain realized what he'd done, he was more concerned that someone might have sinned what he had done than he was sorry for his brother's death. He looked around and sighed a deep breath of relief that no one was nearby. And then the Lord spoke, Cain, where is your brother? Cain shrugged, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? God replied, Cain, how could you be so cruel to your only brother? He has done nothing but try his best for me, for your parents. And for you. Cain fell to the ground sobbing. Finally, he felt the horror of what he had done, and he had to live with that feeling and the knowledge that he murdered his little brother for the rest of his life. And that would be the end of our story entitled Cain and Abel. Thank you for listening. Cain and Abel are the children of Adam and Eve. They offered sacrifices to God in order to acknowledge Him as the source of everything and of course to express their gratitude to His bountiful blessings. Realizing that God favored Abel's offering more than his own, Cain became jealous. Despite of God's warning, Cain killed his own brother. He even refused to accept responsibility over his own brother. Nevertheless, God was still merciful to Cain. Yet, he has to suffer the consequences of his own decisions and action. In a family with many children, more often than not, there are those who are favored by parents for some reasons. Maybe that son or daughter is obedient and respectful. Maybe he or she is doing very well in school. Or maybe he or she does most of the household chores at home. The rest of the siblings might feel insecure 
so that when the parents are not around, the favored one might encounter confrontation from the other siblings. Sometimes, this situation will lead to a violent encounter or experience, just like what happened in the story of Cain and Abel. One message of the story is that we are our brothers and sisters keepers. But look at our society today. There are many Cains around us. We no longer recognize that somebody is a brother or a sister for whom we are responsible with. We are even indifferent to the sufferings of other people. Why? It is because we never see them as our brother or a sister. Or if we do, we behave like Cain. With Cain, we always say, Am I my brother's keeper? But there is a story about a little boy who is struggling to carry a baby who was almost as big as him. When the boy was offered help to carry the baby, he refused by saying, He is not heavy. He is my brother. If we consider the other as our brother or sister, then it is not difficult to go out of our way to help them. And this concludes the story of Cain and Abel. Our next story is about Esau and Jacob. One of the most fascinating aspects of the Bible is how God works through flawed people to accomplish extraordinary things. Because we are all imperfect, we may create a personal connection to the scriptures because we are always in need of mercy and inspiration. The story of Jacob will help you begin to see how God created you for a specific reason. Consider how your personality, life situation, and shortcomings may be part of a larger plan to achieve something wonderful in the world as we explore this story. Let us consider these three questions for us to reflect. How has God created me to be unique? How does God shape me through my challenges? And how will God use my life to give others purpose? This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son, Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean, from Padan Aram, and sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac and Rebekah are married. God renews the covenant promise that he made to Abraham by repeating it to Isaac. It will be through Isaac that God would create his mighty nation that would bless the world. However, like Sarah, Rebecca is also barren, and she and Isaac struggle with infertility for almost 20 years. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, because she was childless. He answers Isaac's cry for help. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife Rebecca became pregnant. But think about this, if only one line is going to carry the promised blessing from God, what happens in the case of twins? Well, before either twin is even born, God tells Rebecca which one he will bless. The babies jostled each other within her and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. He will bless the weaker and the younger one. In the ancient world, the firstborn gets the father's inheritance and the blessing. 
So, the rest of the story shows how God would work through human events to make good on His promise. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. According to the Bible, they struggled together in Rebecca's womb, foreshadowing their troubled relationship. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had the taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebecca loved Jacob. Jacob was different from his twin brother. In contrast to Esau, who was a talented hunter and his father's favorite, Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents and was the favorite of his mother. The Hebrew word for plain is the same word that is translated as perfect, upright, and undefiled in other parts of the Bible. As a result, the term plain alludes to Jacob's character as a godly man. Jacob receives God's greatest honor and blessing. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country, famished. He said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. Jacob replied, First, sell me your birthright. Look, I am about to die, Esau said. What good is a birthright to me? But Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. This birthright was a link in the line of inheritance that would eventually lead to the arrival of the promised Messiah. To exchange something of large, significant, or fundamental value for a financial gain that turns out to be of little, trivial, or no value yet seems enticing or valuable at first glance. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentils too. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. Esau could not have been on the verge of death from missing one supper, but he did demonstrate how worthless the birthright was to him. When Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I am now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Now then, get your equipment, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat, so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Now. Rebecca was listening as Isaac spoke to his son, Esau. When Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebecca said to her son, Jacob, Look, I overheard your father say to your brother, Esau, Bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat so that I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, But mother, Esau is a hairy man while I have a smooth skin. 
What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, My son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother, and she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Then Rebekah took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and put them on her younger son, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with goat skins. Then she handed to her son, Jacob, the tasty food and the bread she had made. He went to his father and said, My father, yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game, so that you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your God gave me success, he replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you really are my son Esau or not. Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau, so he proceeded to bless him. Are you really my son Esau? he asked. I am, he replied. Then he said, My son, bring me some of your game to it, so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him, and he ate, and he brought some wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you heaven's dew and earth's richness, an abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed, and those who bless you be blessed. After Isaac finished blessing him, and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. He said to him, My father, please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. His father Isaac asked him, Who are you? I am your son, he answered. Your firstborn, Esau. Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came, and I blessed him. And indeed, he will be blessed. When Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. But he said, Your brother came decidedly and took your blessing. Esau said, Isn't he rightly named Jacob? This is the second time he has taken advantage of me. He took my birthright, and now he's taken my blessing. Then he asked, Haven't you reserved any blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, I have made him lord over you, and have made all his relatives his servants, and I have sustained him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, 
Do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. His father Isaac answered him, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heaven above. You will live by the sword and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near, then I will kill my brother Jacob. When Rebekah was told what her older son Esau had said, she sent for her younger son Jacob and said to him, Your brother Esau is planning to avenge himself by killing you. Now then, my son, do what I say. Flee at once to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay with him for a while until your brother's fury subsides. When your brother is no longer angry with you and forgets what you did to him, I'll send word for you to come back from there. Jacob looked up and there was Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Raquel, and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Raquel and Joseph in the rear. He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the women and children. Who are these with you? he asked. Jacob answered, They are the children God has graciously given your servant. This was God's plan. God has a great plan and purpose for us all. God can use your strengths, your weaknesses, your insecurities, your experiences, and your past for a purpose. Do you accept your weaknesses and pray for how God wants you to give faith to others with the same challenge? Or do you hide and resent your weaknesses? Like Jacob, when God wants to use us, He gives us vision for our lives. He helps us see how we can have an amazing impact. We are uniquely chosen to show others how to go from darkness to light. And that is the story of Esau and Jacob. The stories concern the two sons of Jacob. In the first story, Jacob made Esau swear to sell his birthright. Jacob was successful by seemingly enforcing a sort of blackmail on his brother. In the succeeding story, Esau at first held a grudge against his brother because of the blessings of his father Isaac had given him. But eventually, Esau was able to forgive his brother. When they met after many years, Esau ran to his brother Jacob and threw his arms around his neck and kiss him as he wept. If you listen attentively, the last story about meeting of Esau and Jacob, you can almost feel the tension in the situation. If you were Jacob, it is normal that you would be fearful. You have known that your brother planned to kill you. There are people who bear grudges and will not forgive even for a long time. In this story, it was different. Esau showed the better side of human beings and the real meaning of being brothers. While it is normal that there are sibling rivalries, but the action of parents should not encourage such. And while misunderstanding between brothers and sister may be serious, this should not lead to total separation. But quarreling parties 
should take the initiative of reconciliation. The action of Jacob and Esau to meet each other points to this initiative. Reconciliation becomes easier when those who are to be reconciled exert enough effort to meet each other halfway. In our Filipino culture and situation, we sometimes hear people say, Kung sino ang aalis, ay siyang kusang babalik. Dear students, we would like to inform you that this will be our last teleconference and video lecture for midterms. We express our sincerest gratitude to all of you who actively listened and participated in all of our session. We always hope that you acquired something significant in our discussion and may apply them in your daily encounter with other people and of course with God. To formally end this, may we now have our closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift of our family. We ask forgiveness for the conflicts and misunderstanding that we have. Help us to see Jesus in every member of our family. Bless our family and strengthen our relationship with one another. Fill us with your love and care so that there will be peace and unity among us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.